To discuss this, I'm joined now from Colombo by Delante Witanage. He's a former government advisor and the chief executive of Buddhist nationalist group Bodu Balasena. In London, we have Alan Keenan. He's a senior Sri Lanka analyst at the International Crisis Group. And completing our panel in New York is Mario Arultas, an advocacy uh, director at the People for Equality and Relief in uh, Sri Lanka. I thank you all for joining us. Delante, let me start with you. So many people see your country in crisis right now. The president sacking the prime minister, replacing him, bringing in Mr. Rajapaksa. Delante, do you believe that it was the right decision? It is very difficult for us to uh, decide on this decision because uh, some uh, says that, you know, president has the constitutional power to do that. But some others argue that it is not correct. Uh, but what I want to say is that people, if you look at this country, fed up about the politics played by Ranil Vikramasinghe during the last uh, three and a half years. And after the war, uh, we had uh, reasonable stability in the government, stability in the country. But unfortunately, after 2015, when the new government came into power, people thought that they will introduce good, government, good governance practices. But unfortunately, uh, during that period, we experienced two different leaders belonging to different social groups, political, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, cultural perspectives had fight among them. And we felt that country is not moving forward. But at the same time, we don't know if it's true or not. There was a complaint by somebody and president claimed that there was assassination, uh, attempt to assassinate him by some uh, ministers and some groups within the government. And as a result of that, he decided to uh, uh, change the uh, premiership. And uh, yeah. there are issues. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the claim, right? And that's the claim. And a lot of people are surprised, not only by how swiftly things happened, but who he brought in place as prime minister, Mr. Raja Paksa. Let me ask you, Alan Keenan, as the International Crisis Group, I've read some of your stuff in relation to this and in response to this. You guys are not happy. Tell me why. Well, I'd say we're not happy on, uh, and I think we join a lot of others who are not happy on, on two counts. First of all, there's the procedural one, which is how Sirisena, how uh, Ronald Vikramasinghe was pushed out and, Siris, and um, Mahinda Rajapaksa brought in. Virtually all independent um, legal analysts uh, say that that simply was not in the Constitution. Sirisena did not have these powers. So Mahinda Rajapaksa is there with a whole bunch of other new ministers in an illegal uh, status. I mean, he doesn't have a legitimate claim to that role. Now, that's bad in of itself, but it also sets a really bad precedent for any country for the Constitution to be willfully ignored and for power to be transferred by non-constitutional means. So that's the first point. Then I think independent of that, there's lots of reasons to be worried about the style of governance that Mahinda Rajapaksa has, has employed in the past and the, the likelihood that that will be repeated. And I'm thinking in particular about not only the, the gross violations of human rights leading to the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians at the end of the war, but many other things, disappearances, uh, enforced disappearances of political dissidents uh, and activists, uh, attacks, murders, and beatings of journalists, basically shutting down um, most of democratic space in Sri Lanka. So that's why so many people are worried about Mahinda Rajapaksa coming in. Whether he came in legitimately or illegitimately, that would be an issue as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mario, what's your bigger gripe? How this happened or who the man is that's taking the role of prime minister and what, what it means, especially for Tamils? I think, I think both. Uh, I think we need to um, also look at, at the bigger picture here where uh, Sri Lanka's structure is renowned for uh, being flawed as such. And previous governments have not, had, the constitution has not had bearings on previous government when it came to uh, killing its own civilians. So yes, while this is unprecedented uh, in, in the sort of power grab that it happened, um, to Tamils this was something that was uh, somewhat predicted over the last few years. Um, and, and yeah, the concern for safety of Tamils, but also Muslims uh, must mm -hmm. be noted at this point. And I would like to point out that 
uh, the other panelist, Mr. Vitanayaga, he's, he's uh, the leader of a group, the Bodo Bala Sena, which is an extremist group which has engaged in hate speech and has incited violence, which actually cost the lives of Muslims earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And over the past few years, this has happened repeatedly, even under the, pre under the Ranil government. Um, so I think it's important to, to, to note that, while it's important to note that um, the repression under Mahinda Rajapaksa uh, after 2009 and before 2015 was extreme, um, and the election of the Ranil government opened up some space for civil activism, uh, what happened in, in the meantime is that the military and uh, the intelligence services were actually monitoring Tamils and taking detailed records of what was happening. Right. So I think the fear from Tamils is that the, the actual structural problem was never really solved. Right. Okay. So I don't want to get too sidetracked. And we've had this discussion before, Delante, but I want to give you the opportunity to, to respond because when there was trouble on the ground, we addressed a lot of issues with regards to your organization and your views about... Muslims in Sri Lanka and whether you consider them equal citizens and so forth. But we have a claim from Mario. He says your organization is an extremist organization and you guys have been milking bad rhetoric all this time, all along anyway, and you are responsible for, for deaths and you have blood on your hands. You can address that. Delante, go ahead. So uh, very unfortunate uh, the, how the Mario uh, claimed this because we our hands are very clean and we don't we never had any violence actually if you look at what happened in the candy recently and you can see that uh, none of the budubala sena members uh, arrested or nothing happened even in aludgam incidents we have requested former president mahindra rajapaksha present uh, president uh, maitripala sirisena as well as prime minister to appoint a commission and to investigate because we were not involved and recently uh, some uh, uh, what do you call uh, some uh, uh, claims that there was a uh, some of the police officers and some political leaders were behind uh, uh, having uh, having a conspiracy in order to have this uh, trouble in uh, Kandy area. So, and if you know, uh, we are we are negotiating with Muslims and Tamils. We are working with Muslims and Tamils in this country. So, only media created this uh, uh, hype, and people aware of this uh, really in Sri Lanka that we were not involved in those. Uh, you know, uh, activity. So our hands are not without without blood, and we are very clear about that. That that. Uh, actually, what I want to say that you know, uh, our friend from London was saying that many people are not happy about what happened in Sri Lanka. I I believe that people who supported uh, internationally from uh, uh, London and US and other countries to uh, change the regime, Rajapaksa regime, they might not be very happy about it. But if you look at the present situation, most of the Sri Lankan people, I believe. Even Muslims and Tamils are happy about this change. Well, we don't, we don't know there that. Are issues. There hasn't been an election. There hasn't been a poll. We have no idea of finding that out. No, no, why not? At now, least recently, at we this had, moment, recently have you done a poll? A lo local government authorities and majority of votes won by uh, uh, Maitripala Sirise in a party and uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa party. So, therefore, we cannot say that people are not supporting them. It was not done after the sacking of the prime minister, the um, no, I mean, sacking of the cabinet, this incident, suspending this, parliament. This before, okay, uh, hold on, this, hold on for a second. Uh, now, I, I just want to make sure that we don't sort of mix a whole bunch of issues here. I just want to give Mario, I want to give you one, one chance to respond to some of what Delante said, and then I want to put a button on that so I can look at some of the international implications here and what the United States, China, and others have said. So, direct response, Mario, before we move on. Go ahead, Mario. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's, it's much disputed that the BBS is a hate group. Um, they formed a partnership with Burma's uh, 969 movement, as in, um, this, is, this is not something that's, that's, that's under dispute. The leader of the BBS is actually in prison for targeting uh, yes. the, the wife of a disappeared person. So um, I think no, this is something that um, is, it's, uh, of course, this, will, this is the answer that will come from the BBS. Okay. Alan Keenan, let me talk about the big picture again. The Chinese were very quick to congratulate Raja Paksa. Tell me what's going on there. Well, the, um, the Chinese then, um, to, you know, to be fair, uh, soon thereafter met with Rano Vikramasinghe too, so th I think they're trying to present themselves as balanced. Uh, the, the way I think about it is, um, under uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa's presidency, the Sri Lankan government enthusiastically embraced 
Chinese money. Chinese uh, gave uh, crucial political support and sold lots of weapons during the last stages of the war. And then after the war, uh, you know, spent, offered a lot of loans and other sort of infrastructural development to build lots of big projects, um, which Mahinda Rajapaksa got a lot of credit for, also a lot of um, uh, criticism for. So then um, when Ranil Vikramasinghe tied up with Maitripala Sirisena uh, to challenge um, in the in the presidential election of January 2015, part of their, um, their platform was to um, end some of the um, ongoing Chinese-funded and, and, and implemented projects because mm -hmm. they were seen as wasteful and expensive and so forth. So I think, but what happened was the Sirisena Vikramasinghe government then found that they didn't have enough money to pay Chinese debts uh, and other debts, and they didn't have the money to do all these other things they wanted to do. So they ended up going back to the Chinese, uh, but they did it reluctantly. So I think, you know, it's the difference of under Rajapaksa in the past and likely in the future, it will be a, an enthusiastic uh, embrace of China, mm -hmm. whereas under um, uh, Ranil, it was a reluctant one. So I think that's the real, that's the difference. Yeah, massive infrastructure deals with China, especially with Hambantota port. Millions or billions of dollars, rather, in debt are the Sri Lankan uh, government to the Chinese. Yeah. Mario, let me talk a little bit about reconciliation here and the issue of the civil war and the legacy of the civil war. Yeah. There are those, many Tamils accuse Rajapaksa of being a war criminal. Many others see him as a hero for ending the war, for defeating the Tamil Tigers and stopping the war by winning it, right? Isn't it an argument to say, well, I mean, he was leader during wartime, and it's going to be very different now because this is a Sri Lanka under peace. So you can't judge him on his actions during wartime now. Things are different. The context is completely different. I mean, I think there's no argument to justify the massacres of tens of thousands of Tamil civilians uh, during the war even. But even if you look beyond that, if you look after May 18, 2009, um, until 2015, when he was deposed, th his reign was marked by abductions, by killings, and um, he, not only himself, not only the state, but also paramilitaries aligned to the state. And if you look at the sort of crimes that happened during the war, for example, the leader of the LTT, his 12-year-old son, was executed. It was, you know, pretty inconclusive. We found pretty conclusive proof that it was the military that had him in the last custody, and then they found his body riddled with bullets. So as such, it's 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 all it's all linked. This is something that single Buddhist national uh, single Buddhist nationalism underpins uh, the, the reign of, of Mahinda Rajapaksa's government, and it never really went away under the Ranil Sirisena alliance, although it took, it took more of a back step. And I think this is, this is important to note that the, 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 the population is, is one that does vote for uh, nationalist uh, rhetoric and populist rhetoric. And uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa knew that this was the case, and he's, it seems like he's taken advantage of that. Right. So, Delante, the argument being made by Mario is that we're seeing this swing towards Sinhala Buddhist nationalism at the expense of the rights of Tamils, of Muslims, and others, no matter what. Is this true? I, I don't think there is no such thing called uh, single Buddhist extremists. Actually, as Sinhalese, if you look at Colombo City, uh, most of the uh, if population, if you look at Tamils and Muslims, they live in Colombo City. Actually, the if you go to Jaffna and the Muslim areas where they don't even allow Sinhalese people to live, you can go. You can go through the uh, statistics and you know uh, details. Actually, uh, if you look at Godubala uh, uh, Sena, we believe that whether you are Sinhalese or Buddhist or uh, Tamils or Muslims, we all have the equal rights. So therefore, you cannot say that we are extremist people. But unfortunately, we were fighting against extremism. We were fighting against terrorism. We were we were against LGT because they it, they took arms. They they were. We, we had the same thing for Sinhalese youth, JVP, when they took, took arms also, we are against that. When Muslims try to take arms also, we are against that. So it's nothing to do with Sinhalese, Buddhist or Tamilist. And actually what I want to say that I'm completely disagree with uh, uh, Mario because BBS leader uh, arrest, uh, imprison, not because of the reason you mentioned, it is for the contempt of court. Actually it is, actually we understand it's a wrong decision. Actually for something he not done, he was imprisoned for 19 years, and actually we think that that's a crime of a judicial system of the Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan uh, government, manipulated by the police and the uh, AGIS department. Okay. And if you look at... Sure. Okay, so Delante, I mean, 
And one of the reasons we have you on is because what you're saying is, in, in many ways, as far as we understand, representative of what a lot of people do believe and why a lot of people do support Mr. Rajapaksa and others. Alan, as we circle back to the beginning here, you mentioned two issues. The, the one issue mm. being the concern over it not being constitutional, what, was, what had taken place, the dissolving of parliament and so forth. Mm. And the second issue being the man who's now been thrust on stage as, as the prime minister. What needs to be done in order to ensure that things don't take a sour turn and things don't get ugly? Well, um, you know, there's no guarantee of, uh, that that can be prevented. But I, I think the most likely scenario is that um, when uh, the Rajapaksa and Sirisena think that he, Rajapaksa, has enough votes in the parliament, uh, that he's won over enough MPs from, uh, from Ranil's side, uh, through various means, uh, which I'll leave un unnamed now, it's um, that at that point, uh, Parliament will be reconvened, and um, then there will be a vote, Mahinda will be um, approved, and everything from their perspective will be fine. It, they will say he's legitimate, he's gone through the proper procedures, he's prime minister, everything's done. The question is, what can be done to uh, prevent that scenario from playing out. Because, of course, even if, even if that happens, I don't think his prime ministership will, in fact, be uh, credible or, or legitimate, because it will have relied on this unconstitutional initial step. Um, so the question is, what kind of pressure from outside, what kind of pressure from inside through protest, peaceful protest, and uh, can, be, can be brought to bear that might shift those dynamics and, crucially, might hold might persuade those MPs who are now being offered money, apparently, and various other, uh, um, you know, uh, perks uh, to actually, um, s you know, stick stick with where they've been mm -hmm. before. Th that's a, a very it's very difficult. Um, the leverage that um, both domestic and international uh, critics of of, um, of of Rajapaksa's appointment and sort of defenders of the rule of law and constitutional norms, the leverage they have is is very limited. And it's um, but I think the challenge then also will be if this scenario does play out, what then? Right. What will those Western governments uh, who have been critical of this move do if Mahinda's uh, sort of ensconced more firmly in power with the parliament's backing? Yeah, testing times for Sri Lanka. There's undoubtedly a political crisis. The Speaker of Parliament, who is on the opposite end of this to the president, saying there could be a bloodbath. That's from Karu Jayasuriya. We hope it doesn't come to that, and we will keep a close eye on the situation in Sri Lanka. For the moment, I have to move on. So, Delante Witanage, Alan Keenan, and Mario Arultas, I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.